Welcome back everybody to Falcon Place Neo Scavenger and today's the day we've all been waiting for. Depths of Cryogen's mod is going to finally be undertaken here today. Uh, we've been slowly building ourselves up to this point trying to find all the required items for it. Now I will admit right now that I have not completed the mod beforehand so I do know of some items required which is the ones I've been trying to find. But I can't say for a fact 100% that I have all of them because I've never completed the entire thing beforehand. But I do feel pretty confident that we have just about all of them. And the second thing I'm going to say before we get underway as well is that I'm a little bit under the weather so if my voice is a bit off or is there any sort of like cuts because I have to maybe clear my throat to put it lightly. Um, hopefully you understand I'm feeling a bit under the weather but I need to record a few episodes here because if I do get sicker down the line I probably won't be able to record for episodes for a while so I'm gonna, I want to have something saved up just in case that actually happens. So let's get underway over here and we are ready to go. We have three more moves left over. Uh, I do believe we went through this whole little shack area over here and found a lot of good stuff. Everything over here left over is stuff that we don't need, I'm pretty sure, right? Let's see. We have a crowbar at 73, and these are the crowbars that we left over over here that we found, as a matter of fact, in the shack area. You know, we couldn't find one single crowbar for the entire run so far, but over here we found all of the crowbars in the world, so that's how usually that works out. But yeah, I think we're pretty much set. Alrighty, so let's get on out of here. We have three moves. One. Who's this guy? Yo, dude, who are you supposed to be? I'm going to try to avoid this guy just because I really don't want to get into a fight right now. I just want to go into the facility and get this underway. Now, if he wants to fight me, then, you know, unfortunately, we're going to have to fight him. But he apparently booked it. He's a smart dude. He wants nothing to do with me. I am a man who kills dogmen, after all. I'm a man who kills dogmen, after all. I am a man who kills dogmen, after all. I'm not sure why I'm saying that so many times, but it just sounded kind of weird the first time. I had to repeat it a few extra times as well. Let's get in here. <clears throat> So, we're inside, let's go into... We need to... What is this? Excuse me? Uh... <laughs> okay. I'm slightly confused. This is... This has to be the meat that we left over when we killed Dogman initially, right? When we first started the... The run. Why is this not spoiled yet? What? I mean, I'm slightly confused. I'm, I'm kind of happy because this means that, hey, I, I could start a fire right now and, like, you know, <laughs> we have some salted cured meat more than likely. Really? It's got to be some sort of mistake, right? Well, I mean, we have no room for it. I could make room, obviously, but... Okay, hey, well, <laughs> I guess before we undertake it, let's go ahead over here and salt some of this food. This is like a surprise to me. I have no idea what will happen here. Did somebody else kill a dog when was gone? If so, then there's another tough badass out in this wasteland living with me as well. And I, I need to meet this guy. Because we need a fight for the, for the ride to be the, the main guy over here. So let's go into medium campfire, maybe lid. That's going to work out perfectly right here. Now, what we need to do is actually get some... Oh, we actually already have two, right? We have some ashes that we got beforehand. But right now, what we're going to do is actually extinguish this a little bit. Then we will come over here and stoke, if we can. There you go. And... Toss you back in here. I think that should be enough. Let's see how much do we have now. We have one, two, three, four. And we have four big meats. Yeah, we could easily do this. I and mean, we'll probably eat one right now more than likely as well. So I think this works out pretty good. Okay, so let's go into crafting and we want to go into salted cured meat over here. <clears throat> one or the other. Again, you'll apologize. You'll forgive me. I'm over here clearing my throat. I'm trying not to do it so often because I don't have to like cut or edit the video so much because I'm over here constantly clearing. So, um,. I'll try to keep it minimum, I guess I'll probably say that. Let's go into cured medium meat over fire. Perfect. We'll do one. We'll do two. And we'll do three. And the other one, we're just going to cook it regularly. So this will be uh, roasted medium stick. There you go. Okay. Now then, this is a surprise to me. I'm going to tell you right now. This is quite a surprise. What I want to do is we got to find some room for this food. Um, you know what, Berries? You are starting to kind of go bad on me anyway, so we'll probably do this. We'll move Salted Dude over here. We have some bullets as well. We have this purification tablet. We have a lot of string over here, too. Hmm. I don't think I need that much string, so I'll remove you out of the equation for now. We already have all the required um, tinfoil needed for our thing, so we can leave this behind, too. Let's do some organization over here. Might be able to fit bad boy over here. Perfect. And then you over here. All right. It has worked out quite well. I'm excited about this. Let's go into just eating this dude straight up right now. All right. <laughs> that worked out quite well. Okay, cool. 
So, now let's get into the facility itself. We need to... not scavenge over here, we just need to go inside. How do I... how do I get myself back inside of here? Yo. Normally, there's like a little entrance right here. Where's the entryway? It's not scavenge, is it? Oh, I guess we might really have to scavenge it again. Alright, it's fine. There it is. So you scavenge it, then it pops back in. Okay, I get you. So, let's go in here and use. <clears throat> okay, back in the cryo chamber, you still feel echoes of the panic that gripped you. When you awoke here, it leaves you feeling unsettled. However, that time has passed. Maybe it's time to look around again. And that's exactly where our modded thing kind of undertakes over here. So we want to go inside into the facility itself. Outside of the cryo chamber, there's a dark, debris-filled corridor that looks disused. It goes in both directions, left and right, bending in such a way that you suspect it might be circular in shape. Well, that would be a, probably a good assessment considering the um, facility does look pretty oval from the outside. Uh, no lighting is working, but there seems to be a dim illumination coming from behind the curves of the corridor on either side. Your mind, set on exploring the place, you pick up one way and slowly start to walk. You carefully step over piles of refuse and rubble, walking past several blocked doorways on the outer wall. Soon you reach the source of the weak lighting, or the weak light breaking the deep darkness inside the building. It turns out to be a plexiglass window located on the inner wall of the corridor. It's looking into a small winter garden located at the core of this facility. There's a second such window on the exact opposite of the garden, explaining the similar glow you have noticed, lighting the corridor in the direction opposite to the one you chose. The garden itself is a sad thing to look at. There's a single tree inside, now a dead stalk, surrounded by some dried out remains of smaller plants. The cold outside light spills into the facility from a dome located above it, intended to protect the fragile, exotic plants from the harsh elements outside. Without the human supervision, it cut off the rain and condemned all the vegetation inside the debt from the lack of water. Somehow, disheartened by the picture, you turn back to your exploration, continuing your way down the hall. I gotta tell you right now, Kevin does a really good job of normally in his, like, mods. Like, I'm pretty sure the facility to the west of, um, the f the, I guess, the cryogenic facility as well. There's, um, that little mod that he made with, off to the left, I'm pretty sure it was him anyway has some pretty good writing in it as well, so he does a pretty good job of kind of like fleshing out the environment and the atmosphere for you. Soon you finish a full circle, walking past several more doorways and the other window to the dead garden, you arrive back at the door of the chamber you awoke in. On your way around, you kept looking at the plaques with the names of the rooms you have passed by, creating a mental map of the facility. There seems to be two cryo chambers, the one you woke up in, number 15, and the other one, number 14. There's also four examination rooms numbered 14 to 17, a staff room, and a control room. From the main hall, two side corridors branch out, one labeled as leading to the toilets and a security office, and the other going to the main lobby. You're standing in the middle of the main hallway of the Gaijus Cryo Facility. Alrighty. Now, remember how we killed the dogman when we first started off this run? I think, more than likely, if you come back... If you didn't kill him the first time around, you probably might have to deal with him a second time around if you didn't do it initially. So, I, I can't say that for 100% uh, fact because I've never done it myself, but I get the feeling you might have to. Anyway, right now we have two um, options. Re-enter the cryo chamber 15, which is where we started from. We don't want to go there. We want to start looking at some of the new areas that we have here located. So, we'll go into the examination rooms at 17. You slowly and very carefully proceed to check each of the examination rooms, the beastly howls of the creature you encountered here before still echoing very loudly in your memory. Each set of the automatic doors have been left wide open, luckily, but the space inside each room is plunged in almost complete darkness, so that the best you can do is stand near each entrance, listening for the slightest noise that might suggest danger. After making sure that it is safe, you enter each room, feeling your way into the dark with your hands, looking for anything useful. Sadly, rooms 14, 15, and 16 yield nothing of use. They're totally empty, no tools, no furniture, no nothing. It looks like either they were looted very thoroughly or were never furnished to begin with. Most likely the second option, seeing how even the carpeting is missing. Then you approach the doorway to the room labeled as Exam Room 17. Forcing the makeshift barricade blocking your way aside, you peer into what looks like a clinic exam room. While there appears to be little worth looting, this room looks like it'd make a great hole of sight. Exam Room 17 has been added to the Hex's campsites, and this is going to be part of the original game itself. You can always come back here if you have the electrician skill, and maybe mechanical skills, to not only turn on the heater, but you could also turn on the lights, and this could be like a little bit of a safe haven for you. So that's, that option is still available here in this mod, mind you. Okay. Confirm. <clears throat> and this will basically open up everything else for us. You are standing in the middle of the main hallway of the Gaio, uh, the Gaijus Cryo Facility. 
So here we have check the staff room, examine the door to the security room, room 17 again. Let me do room 17 again to make sure we've got everything out of here. And this will be the actual place where you can turn on the ventilation and also the lights as well. I don't think we could do any of these. We might be able to do the electrical panel because we do have electronics, but I don't think we could do the vent if I'm right. Or maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. Examine the electrical panel. Looks like the lighting is still in good shape, but the wiring is blown. If you could tap into the adjoining power conduit, that might get the them running again. You need some bits of wiring, small parts, and a tool to do it, though. And we got a little bit of a recipe for that. So we have pliers, which we do. A sharp edge, which we do. Electrician skill, we do. We have everything. As a matter of fact, we might be able to do the cryo lighting right now, too. If I'm correct here. So, let's see. I, I think you might have to do that from the crafting menu, though. So, for now, we're ignored. It's not really the reason we're here for. So, let's check out the examine vent as well. Yep, it's a vent. Sure would be nice if one of those mechanics or maintenance guys were around. And then you could turn this on to kind of warm yourself up if it's too cold. Alright, let's go back over here. So, we're going to start off with security room at first and foremost over here. The security office of the facility lies in the side corridor opposite the toilets. The set of strong metal doors blocking your way in are rusted due to water constantly dripping from a crack in the ceiling right above it. Luckily for you, they appear to be unlocked and left ajar a little. One strong pull and they are out of your way. Only reveal another pile of junk and debris blocking your way in. The water harmlessly dripping from a small crack on one side of the door managed to cause a lot more damage behind it. It badly eroded the very structure of the ceiling and caused a big part of it to cave in. You start to feel a sting of disappointment when you notice something. A light in the dark. Literally. A very weak but noticeable glow is coming from the small clearing in the rubble. The lighting seems to still be working on the other side. After a careful examination, you are pretty sure you could definitely dig through and reach what's left of the Gaijus security office. It's a gamble since there might be nothing in there, but in your current situation, you're considering taking that bet. On the other hand, that is a lot of rubble to dig through. So, here we can try to clear some of the rubble. It's going to take us an hour, so it's going to be one move turn over here. So this will probably end our turn for now, but we'll definitely give it a try here. Having nothing but your hands to work with, you proceed to slowly remove the rubble blocking your way. One chuck of concrete at a time, careful not to cause an even bigger cave-in. After a long, sweaty hour, your muscles start to ache, you decide to take a break. Look at your progress, you feel like you only made a dent in that mountain debris before you. And let's see, we are burdened as well because of all the mead, and maybe because we're tired, but we have now dropped from, yeah, because we're burdened, from 5 down to 4. But we'll continue going at it here for a bit longer as well. Having nothing but your hands to work with... Alright, so it'll be the same thing again. We still have to do this for a couple of more hours, I'm pretty sure here. Our quality torch fell apart. We're, I think we're also going to need some lighting for this area at some point, so we'll keep that in mind. Alrighty, so we worked another hour. And we are now quite thirsty and tired from all the work as well. So this is definitely taking a toll on us, which is actually making this a bit longer now. Only a little more work left. And now we're completely thirsty. We do have some water, so that's perfectly fine. Let's go at it until we hopefully clear out the entire thing here. I'm weak with thirst now. Quite weary and parched as well. Uh, okay, after a last effort, the few remaining pieces of metal in your way are gone, and your way into the cryo security office is finally open. The gap you managed to creak, create looks reasonably safe, and it seems that there is no real danger of the ceiling collapsing again. You hope. After all the hard work, you are finally able to enter the surviving part of the office. The whole place is in a state of great disarray, and it looks like it has that way even before the roof gave in. The remains of water-soaked papers and various office equipment lie scattered about. The desk drawers and the locker doors are left half open. Whoever was stationed here must have left in a hurry. Either that or someone managed to ransack the place before you. The light you spotted previously is not coming from any lighting appliance, as you initially suspected, but from a set of CCTV monitors located over a desk in a corner of the room. Most of them are broken, but the remaining few intact ones are displaying constant static, drowning the ruined office in a cold, flickering aura. So over here we have the security monitors, we also have a locker, and we have the main hall to go back. We are a bit tired, as you can see over here, so we we'll have to take care of that pretty soon. But for now, let's actually go with the lockers here first. There are a few employee lockies, lockers here, and though most of them were destroyed and buried in the roof cave-in, two have survived the catastrophe, mostly intact. The first locker has been left ajar, and even though the hinges look very rusty, you manage to open the door without any problems. Inside, you find some of the security guard's working gear. A shirt, in a surprisingly good condition, due to being left covered in a protective plastic film, and a cheap-looking, rubberized flashlight. 
There were some other pieces of clothing inside once, judging by the moldy pile of rags at the bottom of the locker. But without anything to protect them from the moisture, they have all rotted away long before ago. And here we go, we have a security guard shirt. Yeah, let's go ahead and put that on. We probably won't be able to see it because of our dogman coat and also our hoodie over here. But let's give this a try. Oh, no, 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 my, my friend. Oh, and don't do this to me where it disappears completely. Hey, where, where'd it go? Oh, come on. I hate... Oh, wait, did you... It's not on, is it? No, it's not on. Hey. I hate it when the game does this to me. Uh, the flashlight that we found, unfortunately, has no batteries, too. That's a piss-off right there. Kevin, you tell me why my items always disappear. Oh, they went into my children's backpack. Okay. Um, that's not a big concern. What I guess we could do is just, um... Empty this out momentarily, and we'll go ahead. Why do we only have two or three traps? I guess one of them broke down. We should have four traps all the time. Um, let me go ahead and put on the security shirt on now, though. As a matter of fact, let's put on... Mm, we might have to get rid of a shirt here, more than likely. So, we'll put this on first, and then... Yeah! <laughs> Falcon's a security guard. All right, kids, I'm going to have to have you move away over here, you troublemaker. Stop skating around my 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 mall. Paul, I'm, I'm Paul Blart. Is it Paul, Paul Blart? Mall cop, Paul Blart. I never watched the movie. I'll be honest with you. I'm not really a big much of a Kevin. What's his name? Kevin something. Kevin Sullivan. Kevin Colony. I'm not much of a big fan of the Kevin dude. Whatever his name might really be. You know who I'm talking about, though? He's the goddamn mall cop. That was the joke. Probably if I knew his name, the joke would have probably resonated a bit better. But that's not the point over here. Oh, yeah. We have our hoodie, though. Alrighty. So, you know, under this hoodie, I am definitely a mall cop. So, a uh, hospital gown. Yeah, you could probably, you could still be worn on. As a matter of fact, I kind of look a bit more badass without that little gown on me, huh? Let's remove this gown finally. I don't necessarily want to get rid of it, but, um... There you go. Look, now I look more like a badass than like I'm not wearing like a skirt over here. So that's fine. Um, gown, we'll do something with you at some point. So just hang out over here for a while. Just hang out, have a good time. Flashlights. Mmm. This one's conditioned pretty badly, so let's empty this out. This does have apparently a charge, though, these batteries, so we'll swap them over to here. You move out of the way, and you come over here. As a matter of fact, since our lighting is gone now, you come out of there, and you come in my hand for... Hey. Come in my hand, don't flicker in and out of existence, right? That's cool. And you only cost 574 now, huh? Eh, forget you. Forget you, my friend. Alright, I think we have another one, too, somewhere. Is this the one you could turn on? Insufficient charges. So this is the one that's bad. The other one we could actually turn on for this um, little mod as well. So, you know what? Empty that out. Well, I guess the batteries still do cost a little bit of money too, right? So maybe we should just hold on to them and we'll try to charge them down the line if we can. Okay. So, we have that first part done with. Continue onward. So, there was a second locker too. Let's go ahead and search that one out right now. The second locker seems to be a harder case, being further from c the caving in section of the roof, if suffered no damage, if suffered, I guess I should say it suffered, it suffered no damage, it is much less rusted due to being further from the hole in the ceiling, and it, and it is locked, of course, if you want to get whatever is inside, you need to find a way to crack it open, this is the reason why I was looking for a crowbar the entire time, so we'll use our crowbar to crock this bad boy open, crock this bad boy open, he says, not crack it open, but crock it open. Having a proper tool for the job helps you deal with the lock, the lock in no time. Once open, the locker's contents are yours for the taking. Ooh. Oh boy, whoever was using this one sure did like to keep a snack or two stockpiled for an emergency, to put it lightly. So what is this? I can now look thoroughly with one of my lighters here, which is, which is fine. Let's go ahead and use the one that's about to break down, which is over here, 2.2 condition. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just brought me back inside, huh? Alright, so this is what we found in here. Let's go ahead and rearrange everything here momentarily. And we found some Twinkies, and we also found some Cornicolas, more than likely, huh? So this would be really awesome for you if you're just barely starting off the game and you have a crowbar early on, you could have some Twinkies and some Cornicola. But considering how well off we are, this is basically doesn't really do much for us. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Cornicolas to begin with, anyway. I'm pretty sure there's probably some really decent situations for it. Maybe if it's really cold and you're kind of like, uh not properly equipped with um, clothing, and you're freezing, you could probably have some Cornicola, and it'll warm you up, and then it'll kind of like overheat you after a while, but I think we're fine. Uh, speaking of which, we actually are quite thirsty. Let's start taking care of our thirst issues here for a second, though, huh? 
Just so we can regain a few more of our movement. Not that we need it right now, but after this, we'll probably have to get some sleep anyway. Alright, we're cool now. So then, that's that. Uh, Here we go. Wait a second. Is that what you think it is? Most definitely. Inside the second intact locker, there is a secret compartment installed right at the bottom. It's professional enough that it could stay undetected under any normal circumstance. Luckily for you, it was never designed with protection against a desperate looter like you and mine. In it, there's an envelope containing several small glass ampules. They hold some clear liquid inside, probably a medicine of some sort. So whatever it is, the owner of this locker went a long way to keep them hidden. This I'm not really familiar with. I'm not sure what the hell we just found. What is this supposed to be? Mysterious medication. Doesn't really have too much value, but still, it's going to add into my little um, <laughs> combination of pills over here. I'm not sure what this might be. Cabin? What is this? Can I take it without it killing me? That's all I really want to know. Uh, the only problem is we're completely stocked over here in a little grab bag of different drugs, so we'll start moving this into the hoodie section as well. And I guess we might as well just bring the purification tablets over here too. Alrighty. That's cool. And we're a bit hungry, so let's have these Twinkies. Let's put them into good use here. There you go. Have some Twinkies, have some water, have some mysterious drugs. It might be crystal meth for all I know. Not sure. Alrighty, so... Apparently, whoever owned that office was indeed a druggie. So there you go. We're going to wrap it up here for this episode, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a like. The support does mean a lot. We'll come back next episode continue going through the depths of Gaijin's mod. There's still a lot more to explore, so we are far from done from this point, I do believe. And um, again, if I am sounding a bit nasally or weird here, I'm just a little bit under the weather here, so hopefully you understand. Um, I will catch you next time.